Hi, we're back at the Open Source Bridge Conference. I'm Cami Chaos. This is Strange Love Live. We're joined by Amber Case. Hello. Hi, Amber. Hi, Amber. Where can we find you on Twitter and online? Um, you can find me slash Case Organic on every single social networking site, except I don't have one of those new Facebook <gasps> uh, custom URLs. Do you have a Facebook page? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm friends with you on Facebook. I should keep better track of these things. You haven't gotten one of the new fancy URLs? No, because Facebook's not my main social base. Like, Twitter definitely is, and all things come through Twitter versus Facebook for me. You know, at the, yeah, Dr. Normal's very happy. I don't think Dr. Normal has gotten his fancy Facebook page either, but you know what? The thing is, is I made this mental note to myself, and I discussed this with Aaron Hockley. I said, I'm not going to go and get the Cami Chaos Facebook page. I'm not. I don't need it. It's not important to me. And then the days went by, and I was like, what if someone else gets it? Yeah. <laughs> what if Aaron Hockley gets it? <laughs> what if Rick DeRosie gets it? What if some, like, crazy, crazy person who's not me gets yeah. it? And I gave in, and I sat there that Friday night in front of my computer getting ready for the show waiting and waiting and then as the countdown because if you were on the page when it got ready it actually five four three and so i watched it i said the countdown with it and then i was like oh please oh please no one can get me and i got it it was all cool and it was good and then i tried to get the strange of life page for the strange of life fan page and we didn't have a thousand fans so they won't let me have it oh so then i was very upset hint, but hint. I'm just saying. Someone should just write a script that makes profiles on Facebook and just adds them as fans, and you can get the... Oh, so I can get the... Yeah. yeah that could work. <clears throat> All right, Amber, did you speak yesterday? Yeah, I spoke yesterday. You spoke at the keynote, mm -hmm. and you had another talk, too? No. No, just the keynote talk. I had a nap, and that was, oh. it was a very good talk. Was it a good nap? It was, yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah, it was great. I had an audience, and they all fell asleep, too. <laughs> <laughs> did you give them milk and cookies? Um, Did they get to bring their blankets? I think so, but I can't remember because I was really tired. I would like to propose that someone do a talk next year at OS Bridge that involves nap time. That would be great. Okay. They could just throw and up everyone equations. Bring, yeah, and everyone brings blankets and we have some nice dim lighting. They can hear we've got the nice quiet lighting. And <laughs> it would be good. Oh, we could call it meditation hour? Yeah. Oh, cool. See, I like that. Yeah. This is important. This is the kind of thing we need because kindergartners don't appreciate nap time. No. But we do. You know, it's like what Ward Cunningham said this morning. If you take the traditional model and then you just flip it around. <laughs> so we should have kindergarten when you're older and mm -hmm. then go all the way. And then kindergartners should be doing particle physics. Because they might come up with some amazing stuff. They will because they have the minds for it. You know, you mm -hmm. see them and it's like, who has the answer? They're like, yeah, I do, I do. You never see people do that anymore. We get dumber as we get older. Yeah. Our capacity for learning decreases. Our excitement about it decreases, mm -hmm. I think. It, it, like, the whole world to a child is like a drug trip where everything is bright <laughs> and colorful and insane and it's exciting. And then, you know, You're making and parenting a little different right now. <laughs> yeah. Are you on drugs? <laughs> mm, childhood. Yeah. Um, the talk was called How Open Source Software Spreads Cyborg... Uh, culture. Culture. I'm like, that's not anthropology. <laughs> What's the word? Okay. So tell us a little bit about the talk. I believe that we streamed that talk yesterday morning. Oh, yeah. Am I right? I'm oh. right. I believe we had a lot of viewers for that talk, too. Great. That's I think it cool. went well. Yeah. I woke up at 6, um, and I, I have this problem where I can't give a speech unless I know who the audience is. Mm -hmm. So I went into the speaker lounge, and everybody was joking around and being totally insane. Mm -hmm. So I drank a bunch of coffee and then found a bunch of funny images on the internet and structured the talk around funny images. And that was what it was about. Um, but more importantly, I guess, it was about that we are all raised on the backspace. Like, mm -hmm. We now have... We can fix anything. We can, so everything is... Not everything is, like, fully constructed. So, like, the old type of culture and knowledge type thing is, here's a book, and then uh, if you want to update it, here's another edition, and then here's another edition, and it just takes all this time and space to produce it. Yeah, using um, markers was frowned upon. Right, yeah, <laughs> using... Yeah. So the problem is that um, now nothing is completely finished. That's mm -hmm. really great and really bad. Um, but we're also scrolling all the time. So, like, I think of ancient like scrolls in the Library of Alexandria where everybody's going into these like big conferences and like groups and like breakout sessions and like talking with each other and eating food and like mm -hmm. developing so much text, text, text and scrolling through it, scrolling through it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a, a mini renaissance I feel like we're living in, which is kind of interesting because this backspace, um, but 
I mean, not simply because of the backspace, but... But it's the entire culture around the backspace that yeah. lends to that. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And other things in there. Oh, when oh, so technology becoming ubiquitous and everywhere. Like mm-hmm. uh, there is the the picture of a graph jam, and it said What's like a graph jam. So graph jam is a, a site like LOL Cats, okay. but it's for graphs. So people okay. will make like a pie chart and be like, <laughs> number of times like um, like percentage of time <laughs> on the internet when I'm doing work and then percentage of time I'm looking at porn and like the probability of you looking porn when your wife comes into the driveway is like 60% and then like the probability of you doing work when the boss is over your shoulder is negative 10% or something <laughs> and it's in a pie chart and, so, and they share these graphs, it's great. What's the site? <laughs> it's called graphjam.com. Graphjam.com. Yeah, like, I am not graphs. a little cat hater, I actually have a, a, an affection for them so I'm gonna have to check out Graph Jam as well because yeah, that's right. I, I'm entertained by, yeah, I also still like the funnies in newspapers, too, so, you know, yeah. they're not as good, though. Uh. So the the sound, so my, um, the pie chart that I put up on the screen was, mm-hmm. percent. it was a pie chart of the sounds that I hear while I'm in the bathroom. One, like, 10% was the toilet <laughs> flushing, 20% was the person, like, zipping up their pants, like, 40% was this, and then, like, 30% was the sound of Blackberry keys. <laughs> <laughs> or like, or like little keys or something like mm-hmm. that. So then I said, well, this is proof that technology is ubiquitous because it, you know, it shows up at the bathroom. So now we have like RSS feeds. It's the new newspaper. So you go into the bathroom. And you're like catching up on your news mm-hmm. or something like scrolling, that. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Yeah. So then I put all these pictures of like people computing and then like toilets and bathroom stalls. And I thought I couldn't get away with it, but it was so early in the morning that but you can get away. With, yeah. It's Portland. Yeah. What so. can't you get away with here? So that Not was something, but. Eh. Oh, and then I gave a quote. I mm-hmm. said, first they ignored us, mm-hmm. then they laughed at us, then they fought us, then we won. And that was by Mahatma Gandhi. Mm-hmm. And so that was all about like the open source movements kind of the same way. Like completely ignored, then laughed at, then fought. And then, well, now we have the, these great conferences. And so it seems like we're winning just a little bit. So. Just a little, I don't. I think it's more than just a little bit. I mean, we're making big strides. We're making enormous, but it's nice and like it's not. I don't know if it's slow or fast because there's no idea of measuring speed anymore online because it's all stretchy and squiggly and like doesn't make any sense. But it seems to be like rapid, but in a slow moving way, like mm-hmm. a slow, nice force towards something. Steady, slow and yeah, steady. steady. Yeah, steady. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. All right, Amber, what else are you looking forward to here at the conference? Um, the Well, I liked Chris's speech. That was really good. I liked the, the idea of, of supermarkets. That really hit because I always tell people about Maslow's hierarchy. I'm like, hey, Maslow's hierarchy, Maslow's hierarchy, because I did like speech and debate in school, and we talked about that a lot. And then the idea of like having to go to the store for everything. And so Maslow's hierarchy has now been, OK, now your, your well-living has been brought to you by and now it's like, wow, now your self-actualization is brought to you by <laughs> Twitter, you Facebook, by friend feed, MySpace. And so it's kind of the same thing. It's like we we have a choice of service, but mm-hmm. we don't have a choice to not, really. I mean, it's very difficult. Um, so, and now I mean, we're We have entwined. a choice to go and live out in the woods in a cabin made of rock and that would be, be smelly and that would be awesome actually but we don't know anything right <laughs> except because the we'd smelly be like, part right Tell i'd be me. sitting there googling i'd be like how do i start a fire <laughs> how do i build a log cabin and then i'd be ordering parts off amazon.com like my like wrench and stuff like that and then so that, you know but if you live out in the little rock cabin in the woods and you're smelly and you don't have all that you won't have the internet I know. Because you'd have to go somewhere far enough that you didn't have, like, even service on your phone or someone would find you because then there'd be GPS. Well, then somebody would RFID tag my clothing because I bought it at Walmart. And then they would find me in the woods and they'd be like, how come you haven't purchased anything? Your Amazon.com account can't give you any recommendations when you haven't purchased anything. It's not anything. even possible anymore. <laughs> Let's wait till you shop at Walmart. You can't even be a hermit these days. Damn. No, but I, I don't shop at Walmart. Um, yeah, no, I figured that was just an example. But I do go there, and I go to Ikea. I go to all these places, and I watch the people and how they shop mm-hmm. and how they, like, and how many people shop together and what they look at and where they move. Do they shop in packs, or is it more of, like, a, you know, single singular? Well, it depends, because at Ikea, like, there are a lot of, like, people with, like, pregnant stomachs or 
newly a formed lot, children. A lot of new babies <laughs> and soon to be babies at Ikea. Every yeah. time I go there, I'm amazed. And it's this potentiality syndrome. It's like the potentiality of this and the potentiality of that. And then they have these scenarios. Mm -hmm. Like I walked into this person's living room and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. But they were actually just sitting there in the Ikea setup. Isn't it weird when you go <laughs> and you're walking through the Ikea maze? I go because they have, I like the meatballs. And a little cream sauce. I I make excuses to go and get the. It's it's not healthy. I'm I'm aware. But when you're walking through the maze upstairs, which I like to try to avoid now because it creeps me out for that reason, I feel like I'm walking into someone's house because of the way they have it set up. Mm -hmm. And there's always the teenage kids sitting with their feet up on the couch. Mm -hmm. And you know there was last time I was there, there was a little girl, uh, and she had scooted a chair into one of the kitchen setups and was like playing kitchen in the kitchen. And <laughs> I was just. Well, it's kind of like a new place. It's playground. like a microcosm of life, yeah. but it, well, it's not micro. I mean, it's a huge store, but. Like, playgrounds are internalized now. Like, a playground is an inner space on an interface in a machine. Yeah. And then that's an infinite space, and, like, the parent's not like, well, you can't go across the street in Warcraft because, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can go forever, <laughs> you know? And so, like, now IKEA is kind of this playground. It has. Uh, something for everyone. Literally every single demographic is presented within that showroom. Mm -hmm. They're like, here's your, they even had an architect demographic. That was my favorite demographic. They had a fake architect. The architect's group. office? The architect's office. I and saw that. They also they have a hair degree. salon. A hair salon, right. Because yeah. that's another like entrepreneur, small business dream. And then the other thing. And then these are all these future selves, right? You're like, you fall in love with a future of yourself that will never happen, but you can only get that future self for five ninety nine if you buy that room. And then those objects attached to you in relation with you create that future utopia. But since you never are quite there, you can never be in the future utopia. It's always. So you're, it's, it's actually breeding unhappiness, is what IKEA is doing. Well, yeah, that's how people can Self consume, I guess. dissatisfaction. Self dissatisfaction. Because they want the more. So they, they go and they, we're going to wind up with like escaped mental patients wandering around IKEA thinking they have a hair salon <laughs> and an architect's office. That would be great. That'd be a great <laughs> movie, right? It'd be like Castaway, what with an IKEA. Well, they did that. It was the airplane one. Oh, with, the airplane with, It had one, Tom yeah. Hanks in it, too, I think. Because he had a non-space. He had no country. It's like his... Can uh, anyone tell me the name of that movie? He was Terminal, Terminal, Terminal with the funny foreign accent. And the, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They can have the hacker version with, like, Terminal and, like... <laughs> uh, but, yeah, well... what? Oh, so I'm really worried about something, actually. And what are you worried the, about? This is the last thing that, that I will say. It, well, my Flickr account. I have 16,000 images on my Flickr account. And it's my whole research archive. Everything is tagged, everything's linked to, everything is categorized. I have research papers in there, like design, usability di diagrams, mm -hmm. like stuff, and there's tons of views. And so, what if one day somebody destroyed the account because maybe I screen capped something from Disney, which we were talking about in the law and copyright panel? And, and I think uh, Chris touched on it too. You did, do something, yeah. you misbehave on that, and they take it all away. And and just like, you don't have it backed up anywhere else. And I don't know how. And so I guess I'm wondering, is there a service that can back that up? Because it's really hard to store 16,000 images. Dr. Locally. Normal is not paying attention to us right now, but there is a backup. There's an online backup service that backs up video. Uh, certainly, there would be something that would back up your Flickr online. Also get DVDs oh, it's called Flickr. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are lots of online backup services. Yeah. But will they back up your online content? And they'll content? send you a DVD. Yeah, no, I'm not sure. You can buy it. Mm. The, the problem yeah. with Chris video. Is saying yes. Yeah, I've even seen some open source techniques yeah. for pulling content down and sticking it someplace. Hey, that's that's great. I mean, uh, there's even like an open source. The, the first speaker. person who can tell us what that open source uh, piece is that is not that is not in this room, Nate. Um, and and put it on the on you know and come into this room and tell me we'll win a book. Tell you what? Their choice of a book. Can I just leave and come back and then answer my own question? <laughs> Do you know the name of the open source uh, software know. that allows you to pull all that down? And uh, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but my future self. But will. if you figure it out, come back and you can. Uh, we have I think we have five books to choose from over there. That's cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll try and figure it out. But if anybody else does get a book, it's cool. Yeah. It's a great idea. Excellent. All right, Amber, once again, your slash Amber case everywhere. Oh, case or organic. Or case organic, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know what? I tried to at you once on Twitter, and I, I was like, 
why does Amber Case look so wrong? That just doesn't sound right. And it took me, I was like, oh, because it's not right. I know. I reserved the Twitter account that says Amber Case, and it's and if you click on it, it's like, hey, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be here. I didn't even go there. I just stared at it. Oh, my gosh. I'm, now I have to go and see just because I'm, curiosity killed the cami. But yeah. All right, Amber. So slash Case Organic everywhere. Everywhere you want That to you be. could think except for Facebook. Yeah, then it's just search Amber Case on Facebook. Well, why didn't you do it if you have it everywhere else? Because I'm really stubborn. It's the same reason I haven't purchased an iPhone but develop iPhone apps. I don't want to, I have to be somehow objective in some respect or else I'll just blend in and not have anything unique to say ever. That new iPhone comes out on Friday. Hey, don't tempt me. Hey, 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 hey. Mm, iPhone. All right, thank you so much, Amber. Thank you.